everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I'm gonna to be bringing you my mid-January wrap up. So if you guys have watched my 2020 reading goals video, you know that I set my Goodreads goal for the year at 75 books. So that essentially means that I need to read about seven books a month to be on track. And I've already read six books for the month of January, so I'm already way ahead of schedule, but one of my other big priorities this year was to not pressure myself to read, so I have actually kind of taken it slow. I did get a lot of reading done in the beginning of the month, and then since then I've just kind of read whenever I feel like reading. I've got several books that I'm in the middle of that I'm enjoying, but I've actually been able to chill and watch TV and do absolutely nothing if I felt like it with my free time, which has been really nice. But today we're going to be talking about the six books that I have already finished in the month of January. Also, this eyeshadow look got a little bit bolder <laughs> than I originally thought that it was going to, but you know, we're just going to with it. Before we get into the video, if you're new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So the first book that I completed in January and the first book that I completed in 2020 was Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book to Skyward. Well, obviously, since this is the second book in a series, I can't give you a complete synopsis of the plot, but in the first book, Skyward, we follow our main character, Spencer, who wants to be a pilot. She wants to follow in her father's footsteps and be a pilot, but her father infamously abandoned his fleet. Everybody thinks that she is going to be the same way, end up doing the same thing, and nobody really believes in her. The story goes from there, and the second book picks up where the first book left off. Now, I really did enjoy this second installment to this series. I love Brandon Sanderson's writing. He's really, really talented when it comes to fight scenes and character development, so those were definitely two strong suits in this novel. If you've read the first book, you'd be familiar with the character Mbot. We get a whole lot more of him in the second book, which I loved. I love him and Spence's dynamic. I just think that they go really, really well together. I really did enjoy this story, but I will say I enjoyed Skyward a little bit more than this one. In Star Sight, we get to hear a lot about different alien species that exist in this universe, which I thought was really unique and interesting, but I didn't feel as connected to the plot overall as I did in the first novel. So overall, like I said, I did enjoy this novel, not quite as much as the first, but I definitely still think that it was a solid continuation, and I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of the series trilogy. I'm not sure what it's going to wind up being. But I end up giving this one a four out of five stars. The second book that I completed in January was The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides is how the woman said it in the audiobook. I thought it was Michaelitis, but they did an interview with him at the end of the book and she said Michaelides, so do with that what you will. So it follows our main character, Theo, who is a criminal psychoanalyst who has just taken a new job where he is going to get the opportunity to work with a patient named Alicia. Alicia was really, really famous, infamous in this case where she came home one night to her husband, shot him five times in the face, and then has never spoken since that day. And Theo thinks that he is going to be able to cure her help her talk and figure out what really happened that night. Now, this is one that has been super, super hyped on BookTube and Goodreads throughout the last six to nine months or so. It won the Goodreads Choice Award for Best Mystery Thriller of 2019. I wouldn't go that far. I do think that there were several others that were better than this one, namely The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware and Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Bless you. Bless you. I will say that I enjoyed those two more than I enjoyed The Silent Patient, but that being said, I do still definitely understand where the hype is coming from. Especially, I don't even read that many mystery thrillers, but for somebody that's completely new to the mystery thriller genre, this is definitely going to be one that sticks with them. I did really enjoy the writing style. I listened to this one on audiobook, and it was really interesting the way that it was told. I don't really want to say a whole lot to give, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I did enjoy the way that it was told, and I thought that the narrator did a really nice job with it. I think that the plot twist came out in just the right way at just the right times. It was it was well done. I believe that this is a debut from this author and I'd definitely be interested to pick up more from him in the future. So like I said, this wasn't my favorite mystery thriller of all time, but I definitely see where the hype is coming from. So I end up giving this one a four out of five stars as well. The next book that I picked up was Birthday by Meredith Russo. This novel follows our two main characters, Morgan and Eric, and they are best friends who actually share the same birthday. So we get to follow them throughout five or six years of their adolescence and we only see them on their birthdays. So I believe it starts out on their 13th birthday and then we wind up on their 18th birthday by the end of the novel. Now this is the second book for Meredith Russo whose debut novel was If I Was Your Girl. Both of Meredith Russo's novels feature trans main characters and Meredith Russo is trans herself so this is an own voices account of trans representation. Now I absolutely adored If I Was Your Girl by this author. It was one of the best trans books that I have ever read and I love to 
supporting this author because she is a Tennessee native, just like I am. So I just feel a special connection to her because of that. And I had heard so many people say that this book was so heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. And it is definitely that. I really, really enjoyed reading about these two characters, how they formed a relationship together and how they grow up independently of one another. They each have their own issues that they're trying to deal with and their lives are really tough. Look at that Santa. His name's not Santa, buddy. His name is Hagrid. I just absolutely loved watching their relationship unfold throughout the course of the novel. And like everybody says, there are really, really heartwarming moments and really, really heartbreaking moments. And I just felt so attached to these characters, even though we only got to see them once a year, still was really able to form a solid understanding of these characters, rooting for them the entire time. It was precious. If you haven't read this novel yet and you're looking for trans rep or you're looking for a solid YA contemporary story, please go pick this one up. It was so good. I wound up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I completed in January was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kimmerer. This is the second book to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I actually received this one as an e-arc through Edelweiss and it came out on January 7th. Now again, as this is the second book in a series, I can't tell you a ton about the plot, but A Curse So Dark and Lonely is a Beauty and the Beast retelling that follows our two main characters, Prince Wren and Harper. So this book obviously picks up where the first book left off. There is a big plot twist at the end of the first novel and we get to explore that in this novel. We get new characters introduced, new perspectives that we're reading from, and we just get to continue the story. Now I will say, I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely, I think in November of 2019, and it was a really, really solid fairy tale retelling. One of the best fairy tale retellings that I have read in a really really long time. I really enjoyed getting to know the characters and getting to see a new iteration of the story through this author's eyes. Now while I did enjoy this second installment, I did not enjoy it as much as the first. The things that I did like about this novel, we get to follow the perspective from our character Grey who we met in the first novel. I love Grey and I loved getting to watch him throughout this novel and some of the new characters that we get to meet and the characters that Grey forms relationships with. I really enjoyed all of them and their dynamics together. Now I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give too many spoilers but if you've read this book then you'll kind of get what I'm talking about. There are some characters in this book that are they're villainized in the second book and they were not villainized in the first book and I was not completely convinced on why we were suddenly supposed to hate these characters. It just I understood what the lines that the author was making, but I wasn't fully convinced and I didn't feel like they were really the villains that they were being made out to be. I will also say this one was a little bit more angsty than the first book. I, that was something that I really appreciated about the first book was that the romance was really believable and it wasn't that angsty. This one was quite a bit more angsty and also the big plot twist at the end of the novel. It was very predictable. I got it way before it ever happened, which I'm really bad at that. So if I predicted the plot twist, that kind of says something. Regardless, I did enjoy my time reading this. It was definitely a fun journey with these characters and I'm definitely looking forward to completing the series trilogy. I'm not sure what it's gonna be, but regardless, if you haven't picked this one up yet, it is a solid YA fairy tale retelling. So I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars. Next, I picked up My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is an adult mystery thriller that follows this couple who have been married for a long time. You know, they have kids together and they have settled into their lives and their marriage has kind of lost its spark and they're just kind of in a rut. So they decide to start killing people to spice things up in their relationship. Now this is one that I had also been hearing a lot of hype about in the end of last year. And again, I can definitely see why. This one was definitely thrilling. It kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. It was just a really intriguing plot all the way throughout. Now I will say the most most of the thrills took place in the second half of the novel. A lot of the first half of the novel was just kind of setting the scene and explaining what had been going on and how they had been killing these people and blah blah blah. But once they did start getting more thrilling and revealing some of these twists, it was really really interesting. I listened to it on audio, definitely would recommend that if you're interested. The narrator did a really nice job. And just in general, the end of this book was like creepy AF. So. If you're looking for something like that, I would definitely say that this is on the thriller side of mystery thriller. There's not a ton of mystery that's involved, but regardless, if it sounds interesting to you, you like domestic thrillers, I might give this one a go. I wound up giving this one a four out of five stars as well. And the last book that I have completed so far in the month of January is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third and final book in the Folk of the Air trilogy. Now again, can't say too much about the plot of this one, but in the first book, The Cruel Prince, we follow our main character, Jude, who 
grew up in the human world and this man named Maddox came in one night and murdered both of her parents and took her and her sisters into the fairy world and she was raised in the world of fairy. The next two books obviously continue on with that storyline and this is the conclusion to the trilogy. Now this one has been getting some mixed reviews since it came out in late November of last year. And I am on the more negative side of those reviews. Some people have been saying that this is an epic conclusion and other people are saying that it's very, very underwhelming. I found this really underwhelming. I was not as invested in these characters as I felt like I should have been. We've been with these characters for two books already, so I should be really, really attached to them. And I completely was not. I could have cared less about what was happening, especially some of the side characters. I really didn't care what was happening to them. I didn't remember what had already happened to them. And it has not been that long since I completed this trilogy so I should have remembered and I should have felt more attached and the stakes should have felt higher to me but they just didn't this was a, just it's just a 300 page novel I felt like 200 pages of this nothing was really happening and when it's the conclusion of a trilogy I want there to be action and stakes throughout the whole novel and I just did not feel like that was there I will also say the ending of this novel it kind of just came out of left field and there was kind of a deus ex machina kind of device where the solution just kind of came out of nowhere and wrapped up really quickly and really conveniently and I didn't appreciate that. So overall, like, I didn't hate my time reading this. It was only 300 pages long. It was okay, but this is definitely my least favorite in the series, so... It was okay if you've already gotten this far this is a short one you might as well go ahead and finish it up but like i said wasn't my favorite in the series why not giving this one a three out of five stars so that is it for all the books that i have completed so far in the month of january but i do want to go ahead and mention a few of the books that i'm in the middle of right now the first one i want to talk about is the starless sea by aaron morgenstern i am about 40 percent of the way into this but unfortunately my library hold expired before i could complete it but i got this one on libby and i went ahead and put another hold on it so i'm hoping that i'll be able to get a skip the line loan and finish it up in the month of January, but we'll just have to see. Regardless, I am really, really enjoying it so far, and I'll be completing it hopefully sometime soon. I also started listening to The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak on audiobook. This is a reread for me. I am not very far into it. I'm only two or three hours into the audiobook. Really, really enjoying it so far. I think everybody knows by now, but this is a World War II historical fiction novel that is narrated by Death, and it follows our main character, Liesel, who is a young German girl in the midst of World War II, and her family winds up taking in this Jew and hiding him and we get to watch Liesl as she grows throughout World War II and steals books and this is a beautiful story that I love and have been in love with for a while and I think everybody loves it and it's just so good and I'm so glad to be back in this world. I am also reading on Scribd After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This novel follows our main characters Lauren and Ryan who have been married for I think 11 or so years and they their relationship is pretty much coming to an end. They think that they're on the brink of divorce so they decide to essentially live apart for one year do like kind of like a trial separation not talk to each other not associate with each other for a year and then they will come back together and decide if they want to try to work things out or if they are going to go ahead and get a divorce this is one that's really really impactful to me since i am married i can only imagine going through something like what the characters are experiencing in this novel and it's really pulling on my heartstrings right now but i am really really enjoying it so far and finally the last book that i'm currently in the middle of is harry potter and the sorcerer's stone obviously the first book in the harry potter series i have just been taking this one really really slow. I think I'm going to be doing that with all of the novels as I read them throughout the months but this one I think it only has 17 chapters so every night or every other night I'm reading a chapter before bed taking it really slow loving it as always. So that is it for everything so far in the month of January. If you have read any of the books that I talked about today let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know what you have completed so far in January. As always if you enjoyed today's video please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!